coming out to our smoker today. Let's check out what's inside. Ooh, look at that. These are some beautiful summer sausages I made last night. They've been smoking for the last two and a half hours and they are ready to be brought inside. And these are gonna cook at, this way I'm, the way I'm doing these sausages, these are gonna cook inside my oven for about an hour at 200 degrees. And then at that point, they're ready to be refrigerated or frozen until you're ready to consume them. But look at that. Can you imagine? What do you think it would cost for a big old sausage like that? Made of venison, lamb, and beef. About 40% venison, about 40% lamb, and about 20% beef. Just absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful. Uh-huh. So these are ready to be brought inside. What we're going to do with these is we'll keep these in the freezer until we're ready to use them. And then we'll take one out and slice them up for sandwiches and slice them up for like pizzas. We'll slice them like really thin and put them on pizzas. They all oh, be so good for that. And uh, just so many other things. We're just eating them as they are. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, I'm going to bring these inside and get them in the oven for about an hour. And then we're going to jump on my camera in the studio. We're going to talk to Jonathan over at Genesis Gold Group. And we're going to see what he says about all this insanity going on in the world. Crazy times we're living in. It's good to put up some food today. It makes me feel like I did something. Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. So today we're here with Jonathan and uh, from Genesis Gold Group, and I thought we would bring him into studio, bring him into the homestead here, so to speak, and uh, talk to him about some of the things that you guys are asking me. Uh, Jonathan, welcome to the homestead. Thank you, Zach. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Outstanding. Now, I've talked to you offline. I'm like, I've seen you on videos and other places, and you got this belt behind you. Um, mm. I, at first, I thought you were some kind of boxing champ. What, what is that? Where'd you get that? Uh, you know what? It's a great question. I was a, a, a big boxing fan growing up. Obviously, from the UK, boxing is a big sport out there. And I used to stay up late, watch all the title fights here in America. And it was something that I always followed. And I remember walking into a store once and I saw this belt particularly behind me. And this gentleman had it. I was like, oh, my gosh, that's amazing. I was like, is it for sale? And he said, no, it's not for sale. But then we became friends. And I was like, is it for sale to me? And then eventually he <laughs> sold it to me. I've had it for over 15 years, but everybody loves it. It's got all the world champions. They've signed their autograph on it. And boxing isn't what it used to be today. But uh, it's a great memorabilia piece. I do I do love it. Awesome, awesome. Now, yeah. a, lot, a lot of people, they ask me, hey, how did you meet Dean Kane? And I said, well, my friend Jonathan introduced uh, yeah. me and Dean. Tell us about that. Well, uh, I've lived in Malibu, California for many years. And Dean and I kind of, you know, transversed in the same circles. And our children went to the same school, uh, Christian school together. So, uh, you know, we just kind of saw each other on the, you know, on the soccer fields and, and in local towns. And, and we became friends and uh, became friends with the family. And, and, you know, over the years, I, I know a lot about his values and his beliefs, and they kind of very much align, you know, with Genesis Gold Group. And, and one night, my wife said to me, she's like, you know what, why don't you call Dean, and you guys should do something together in gold. I, I thought you guys would be a good fit. And it was like that light bulb moment of like, why didn't we ever think about this before? Yeah. And, you know, we, we, we met up, and, you know, Dean is a huge advocate for gold and, and a homesteader, as you know. Uh -huh. um, and, our, you know, he's very conservative and, and strong Christian values. So it, it was just a great fit, and he's a great guy. Uh, we love Dean, and, uh, and I'm really happy that, uh, you know, he could be a great you know, representative for our company. Yeah, he, he's he's a great guy, and uh, getting to know him and watching his uh, his escapades on Twitter, it's mm -hmm. hilarious to see him interact with some of these liberals out there and make their heads explode. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, we definitely have a lot of shared values. We understand that this country is in big trouble, and uh, we understand that you know how this country got here and and some of the values that have been lost over time. Um, so um, he's a great guy, and I'm glad you introduced me to him. Um, also, um, I'm, getting, I'm just getting inundated with all of the recent things going on in our country because of the, the banking collapse and some of these banks that are in trouble. And they're, they're saying that they're not going to bail out these banks, but it's obviously that's what they're doing. Um, yeah. 
And, and I'm getting so many questions uh, from people asking about, number one, Genesis Gold Group, because they've heard me talk about you quite a bit. And then also just like simple questions like, you know, where can I buy a roll of dimes or, you know, yeah. stuff like that. So um, what are some of the common questions you're getting from people? Because I'm, I'm referring everyone to you saying, hey, listen, call right. Jonathan. He's a great guy. He'll treat you right. You know, he'll take care of you. So what are some of the common questions that you you're getting on a daily basis? Common questions are, you know, a lot of people are waking up to the fact that they can take an existing IRA or 401k and roll it over into precious metals. So the first question is, can I do this? Can I put my IRA into precious metals? So it's just really explaining to, to you know, investors what their options are. You know, are they best off staying where they currently uh, are invested in or do they want to move to higher grounds and the flight to safety and security, which gold obviously provides. Um, and it's really about being an informed investor, is a better investor. Over the years, financial advisors have just thrown people into these investments. Oh gosh, and, yeah. and, and, you know, we've really moved forward with these companies just based on their namesake and not really understanding what people are investing in. So when I people ask people, well, what are you invested in? And they say, well, it's an IRA. And, and I'm like, okay, it's an IRA, but what's it invested in? And I don't say that to make them feel bad. It's just to kind of shed light to see where are you currently, are you being affected, and, and do you have options? And when people find out they have options, uh, that's, you know, then we can start talking about other, other types of issues that they're having. Well, what type of gold? What type of silver? How much gold? How much silver? So they're more of a metals allocations uh, consultation call that we have with people. But a lot of the times people just want to find out how does this work? You know, am I holding onto the metals? Do they have to be stored somewhere? So it's really just giving people a, a top-down run-through on how this works and what their options are. Yeah, it, it amazes me. People will just go ahead, and I was this way. I, I was the same way when I was in corporate America. I worked in an office, and I had a 401k, and I didn't know what that 401k was invested in. I just knew I was in a 401k. I had no clue. There was no education, and the, the, the manager – uh, of these accounts never sat us down to you know show us where our money was going it was just there and yeah. and and having uh, you know a little bit more experience under my belt and some you know some knowledge and education now I, I i ask those questions and i wonder you know and and a lot of people i think are in that same boat that i was in they just don't know and and i think if i if it's safe to say correct me if i'm wrong that the things that you can help people with, it's going to be a different, it's going to be different for everybody, depending on their situation and what their strategy might need to be, right? It, it really is. And and you've got to make sure that you're speaking to the right people, people that understand finance. I've been doing this for 25 years. Before I came to America, I actually worked on the London Metal Exchange. I worked for Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, Prudential Securities. So I've worked with the big banks. I've helped big global banks set up gold depositories in Southeast Asia. Um, I've been a financial advisor before. I know how they think. You know, financial advisors are going through the worst time right now because they're getting those calls, right? And they want to liquidate. <laughs> they want to get out of there. And they tell us, oh, I'll take it on the chin. It will come back. And, and granted, yes, it will come back, Zach. But what people don't realize or do realize is that, you know, how long will it take yeah. for assets to go? Seven years, 10 years? A lot of our clients are older and they're retired or retiring. So they don't have time for it to come back. So, each person's uh, goals are, are different. So based on where they are at in life and what they're invested in, we kind of look at a, a broader range and, and from there give them some recommendations on, on, on what we feel could give them some better options. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm of the strong opinion that we are at the end of this monetary life cycle. The, the, you know, fiat currencies only last usually for a certain amount of time historically. Right. 50, 60 years tops. And we just crossed a 50-year barrier um, from 1971 coming off the gold standard with Nixon. And so we're, we're at the limit. This is it. you know. And so historically, we're right on time um, for a, 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 an economic downturn and a death of a fiat currency. Um, yeah. And so well, I, go ahead. Say, yeah. So what's next? The death of a fiat currency. What's next? Well, a digital dollar. That's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's, that's a whole nother. Something that's watch. never been tried before versus something that has 5,000 years of working history. <laughs> right. So yeah, that's kind of how I look at it. Um, uh, all right. So what do you do? I, uh, one of the biggest critics that I get in the comments below, every time I talk about, you know, actual metals and listen, I'm not, I'm just not about gold and silver. I'm about lead, brass and copper too. You know, I'm all about bullets, you know, beans and band-aids. I'm all about that stuff. Uh, however, 
you know, whenever I talk about metals specifically his, as, as a historical preservation of wealth, I get people in the comments who come to me and they say, Zach, when the collapse happens, you can't eat your gold. Tell me why that person is wrong. Well, you know, you can't carry maybe a gold piece in your back pocket, right, and cut it up into five pieces and buy a loaf of bread with it. But, you know, people that want to have gold and silver in their possession, you know, you want to have small denomination coins, so, yes. you know, something fractional. So, yes, obviously you can't uh, eat gold per se, right? but you do get gold-plated steaks these days, I have seen. But <laughs> obviously, you know, with, with precious metals, it is a currency. You know, people, you know, if there was a currency collapse tomorrow, people will always recognize gold and silver yeah. as of value. It's never been worth zero, like you mentioned. Right. So, you know, if you have a portfolio of precious metals and you're keeping it at home, you do want smaller denom denominations, gold and silver, particularly silver. You know, fractional silver you can use uh, for bartability, something you can purchase items with. You know, gold, maybe for your larger transactions, or I say gold is really going to be kind of the crown jewels of your portfolio, something you want to grow, and silver is more of a, a transactional type of a metal. But when it exactly. comes to IRAs, you know, you want to make sure because the IRS only lets you put in certain permissible types of metals, you want to make sure you have the highest finesse gold and silver possible to put into IRAs. So depending on people's, again, situations uh, and what their economic outlook is, there's kind of a product for different types of situations, which people always aren't really aware of, but that's something we also educate people on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I... I... I always I look back a hundred years ago, and a hundred years ago they had these twenty dollar gold pieces mm. that you could go into the store and buy something with, and yeah. you could buy bread with. If you if bread caught, obviously you can't buy bread for a twenty dollar gold piece, but you had fractions back then. You had silver dollars, you had copper pennies, you had metals that were in lower denominations, go, dating all the way back to the Roman Empire. You had you know little Roman uh, uh, bronze and copper coins then too that were that if you added them up up enough you could get a, a gold piece yeah uh, everything's breakable down into something else yeah. that's a good point and if you have a jar of old coins you know and if you have time fun project maybe on the weekend right make uh, time before, make time make time look at the years because if they're minted before 1964 right yeah. 364 uh kennedy halves quarters dollars liberties you know they're 90 percent silver yeah. so you know you could you, you could have a kennedy half dollar uh, in your in your glass jar somewhere, but that that coin could be worth seventeen, eighteen, nineteen dollars today. So uh, you know, currency is 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 real assets such as gold and silver, and and you may already be holding on to some right now and not even realize. Yeah, absolutely. Where do you think we go from here as a country? What's going to happen? We got these banks that are insolvent and they're collapsing. Mm -hmm. Credit Suisse today uh, basically announced or yesterday that they're in big trouble. Um, yep. Where do we go from here? You've been around the world. You've seen the banking system from a world stage. What, what do you think? Everything's cyclical, right? Uh, what comes up must come down, unfortunately. Uh, my biggest concern is debt. I've always been a big proponent of saying debt does matter. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the banking system, you know, the biggest takeaway from this is in 08, in our last banking collapse, banks were leveraged about 18%. And look what happened. Right. It seems like history hasn't really learned a lesson from that because a lot of these banks today are leveraged 30%, yeah. right? And, and obviously, you know, what goes woke goes broke, as Trump always says. So so what we're noticing now is that these woke banks investing all these, these liberal agendas and, and people placed within the bank's management system that really have no experience in banking, this is breaking news today as well, you know, it, it really does mean that you should be with someone that does have a proven track record and, and you know who and where your money is being invested. Now, in terms of the banking crisis, I think we're just at the tip of the iceberg and and I'm hoping Credit Suisse doesn't falter because that would be extremely bad mm. for the economy and could be the first domino to fall for a global recession because it's not just here in America, it's it's all of Europe as well that's struggling. Uh, and I think one one kind of straw that breaks the camel's back can see a huge devaluation and wipe out of trillions of dollars in a stock market. So, you know, it's not good. Um, I'm hoping there's some bright financial sound minds that can turn the ship around but if they do turn it around it's going to be like a cruise ship in in a sense if you've ever seen a cruise ship yep. make a 360 turn that takes some time yeah. so you know during that time 
you know, it's a prudent man that foresees danger and prepares, right? And you want to make sure that if you have assets tied to the market, you understand how those assets are going to be affected and really be in a position where you're kind of creating a financial bunker for yourself. And the easiest way to do that is, again, IRAs, 401ks, you know, they should be your first stop to protecting them with tangible real assets. If you have cash in the bank, well, we know what can happen. We're seeing it right now. It's scary, right? You know, you want to keep not too much cash in the bank because even if you are protected by the FDIC $250,000 limit, if they pay you back, yeah. they, have up to, they have up to seven years. So, you know, during the 80s, you know, the home loans and savings crisis, those people lost all those money uh, in the last banking collapse. Those people took up to seven years to get paid back. So it's definitely about diversification and, you know, without kind of sounding like a broken record, you know, gold and silver is an integral part of that diversification. Right. Absolutely. I totally agree. Wow. What a mess. Uh, Credit Suisse, that's a big, that's a big player in the world stage. Big one. And uh, I, I've heard rumblings about Deutsche Bank too. And so um, the people have been saying for years that they're, they're over leveraged. So um, it's just going to be interesting to watch the next few weeks and see how things turn out. Hey, Jonathan, listen, I really appreciate you coming on here. I know that people wanted to get more information. This is one of the things I'm asked about the most on my channel, especially in the comments section below. Um, it's definitely a, a subject of a lot of emails. What can people do to find more information? How do they get a hold of you or somebody who works with you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have a great toll-free number, easy to remember. It's 800-200-GOLD. Um, or if you're writing it down, it's 800-200-4653. Uh, they can obviously go to our website, www.genesisgoldgroup.com, and uh, we'll be more, than, uh, you know, more helpful to, to educate people on, on what they can do to preserve their assets. Awesome. I have a, a number of people who've contacted me. They've signed up with this. They, they, had, they were locked into some things that they just felt really uncomfortable with, and they got a chance to talk to you, and they feel a lot better about their positioning. So, um, oh, yeah, it is really good. It's very good. All right, guys. Hey, listen, thanks for joining us on The Homestead today. Again, if you want more information, it's genesisgoldgroup.com. I'll put a link in the description below. You can always find it there or in, other my, in some of the other uh, videos that I have up on YouTube. All right, guys. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks, Zach. See you next time at The Homestead. Bye. Hello everybody, I'm Dean Kane, and I am a big fan of American Homestead. As are you, or you wouldn't be seeing this right now. I'm in my backyard, my homestead, where I grow lots of fruit and vegetables. Look, both Zach and I are big fans of history, and we are watching the economic situation in our country just like you are. We absolutely love this country, and it's very difficult for us to watch it struggle financially. Now, did you know that the Constitution of the United States in Article 1, Section 10, only allows for legal currency to be minted in gold and silver? I bet you didn't. I wasn't aware. But our founders, in their wisdom, they understood that this was the true way to build a solid financial foundation for this new nation. And they were right. They were dead right. These principles rocketed the industry and the economy that made the United States the powerhouse that we now enjoy. However, today, the US dollar, it's not backed up by anything of real value. And here we are. Now, our friends at Genesis Gold Group are helping people stuck in 401ks, IRAs, and anyone else who's watching their hard-earned wealth teeter on the edge of oblivion by moving their money out of risky paper-denominated assets and into physical precious metals like gold and silver. You can touch it. I'm doing it myself. So is my sister. Call Genesis Gold Group today and let them help you develop a plan to safeguard your assets. It's simple. You can call the number on the screen or visit them at genesisgoldgroup.com. And I will see you next time on the homestead with my dogs. And all the fruit that I grow. Look at all this good stuff. You know, we got nectarines. Huh? More dogs coming down. Uh, if you get cut, we got some olive vera for, for you. What I, what I do need, though, is chickens. I need chickens. Because eggs are about the same price as gold right now. Anyway, see you on the homestead. <laughs>